What's good, homo squad? It's your boy, homo Ziggy. We back here with another reaction. And look, y'all. Y'all may not see, but you obviously, as you see, I finally got myself a green screen now. So, guarantee y'all, my videos, my reaction videos are about to be a little bit more, more realistic. In a little bit more like advanced, you can say for me, and in a way, I kind of got this idea from what it do, Dave. So, shout out to him on the little idea and such. But hey, either way, I wanted to find a way how to make it exciting. So, hey, what more better Christmas gift and such from yesterday? Shout out to my sister than this. So, hey, appreciate her for that. and. I appreciate y'all for always helping me out in my videos wanting to make me do better but we here with a death battle with galactus versus unicron and look y'all for many times in nerdcore songs or in just any songs or such i'm always hearing about unicron this unicron that galact and in a way galact Galactus, sorry if I pronounce it wrong, but look, I don't know much about these guys. I don't, and apparently these are cosmic giants, right? That's the only thing I know because I saw in the description that it's about that. So all I'm gonna say is I'm about to learn some new stuff and such. So we're gonna go straight right into this. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on all my socials up there. And without further ado, let's get in the video. It just a tad ten eighty at least. Apparently, whenever my OBS is like much that tense. This episode is sponsored by Better Help Help and Death Battle. Galactus, Devourer of Worlds. And Unicron, Almighty Chaos Bringer. That's right, it's the day we've all been waiting for. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. battle. Boomstick, what is the nature of evil? Oh, it's three and a half beers too early for that kind of question, Wiz. <laughs> no, seriously, is the wolf that hunts the hare evil? What about the bear that kills the wolf? Or the man that slays the bear? Is that evil the heck? or <laughs> nature? Perhaps this question was on Gallon of Ta's mind as he hurtled toward the end of infinity. I'm pretty sure the question on his mind was, how do I turn this goddamn spaceship around? Eons ago, the planet Ta was a paradise, the most advanced civilization the universe had ever known. Too bad the universe was coming to an end. I hate it when that happens. The Ta and scientist oh, we Gallen are. watched as the rest of his race ignominiously perished and decided to die gloriously on his own terms. By flying a ship into the sun, just like great grandpappy Boomstick, the crazy old coot. But instead of being what? vaporized <laughs> on contact like great grandpappy Boomstick, Gallen got bitten by a radioactive god. As the last living thing left before the universe's end, Galen was visited by the sentience of the multiverse, who merged with him as part of a cosmic cycle of death and rebirth. As the old multiverse died, a new one was born, and the scientist Galen was no more. In his place was a being of untold power, the ravager of galaxies, Galactus. Galactus. Well, despite looking like a masochist giant purple vibrator, g Dog here is one of the strongest beings in all of my- Sniggers. Like a giant purple- Vibrator, I'm done. Nigga, out of all things you could have called it, why a vibrator? First one was called, first a, other one was called a dildo before. Now a vibrator, I'm done. 
boomstick or boomstick. I don't know how he said it, but nigga, stop it. <laughs> You're nasty. You need, you need to wash your mouth out, boy. You're nasty. Our, the Ravager of Galaxies, Galactus. Well, despite looking like a masochist giant purple vibrator, g Dog here is one of the strongest beings in all of Marvel, baby. And there's only one thing he wants to do. Eat friggin' worlds! Galactus is so unbelievably, mind-meltingly powerful that strong doesn't really begin to describe him. Just being near him will begin to warp your perception of reality. Mm. In truth, he isn't even really a physical being with a soul anymore, but composed of energy itself. The power cosmic. Basically, your all-purpose space god magic that no good almighty ass whooping god can go without. Sure, he can use it to blast your ass to unholy smithereens, but it's a lot more flexible, too. Described as being in touch with every other living thing at once, the power cosmic allows one access to a near-infinite pool of knowledge and the ability to sense danger ahead of time. I don't think there's a lot for him to be afraid of. He can manipulate matter, read and control the minds of gods, and mm. teleport entire galaxies across the universe. The power cosmic allows him fundamental control over life itself. Manipulating hmm. souls, creating new life forms from nothing, and even resurrecting the dead. And because his body is composed of energy, he can't really be hurt in the traditional physical sense. This allows him to grow or shrink his body with seemingly no limit and alter his appearance. Wait, wait, wait. He chooses to look like that? His physical appearance matches the species observing him. So a human sees a human Galactus, a scroll, a scroll Galactus, and so on. Oh, so it's just like how I see the world. What are you staring at? What matters most to me in the world? Of course he awesome. would. No, not awesome. Very. Of course his ass would see the world like that. Drop the quality down just the HD. But at least 720. But for y'all, it may not be. Probably is choppy for balance. Me. But so. Drop it down to 720. But of course his ass would want to see beer cans everywhere and shit so that fits his type of thing you need to tell me this man can literally like resurrect the dead just being near the man makes you bombarded like confused and such about reality ain't that a ain't that a bitch though imagine that you you just being next to somebody who's intelligent is just Far beyond this word that even just touching him or just being near him. Not even talking about anything scientific or anything like that. Just being near him. Causes la causes you to go stupid for a little minute. <laughs> just saying. And not even just stupid. Just straight up. Like. Like a Just like how I see the world. What are you staring at? What matters most to me in the world. Of course. Awesome. No, not awesome. Very yeah, not. not awesome. At least as far as Galactus is concerned, since witnessing his approach is itself the end of the world. You would only have enough time to pray to your <laughs> paltry gods before Galactus consumed your entire planet, absorbing its energy into himself then moving on to his next meal. Man, mm. I guess his costume is appropriate because he sounds like a total dick. Like, come on, man. You watched your whole planet die. Now you're going to go around the universe doing the same thing? It's <laughs> not entirely his fault. Galactus's power is so immense that the only thing that can sustain him is the consumption of entire worlds. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I remember eating, now. He would perish, just as humans would without consuming... Yeah, I think... And this is going to be so funny when I say this. Now I remember who... He is because of them damn your mom because I remember a your mama joke. Yes, it's a your mama joke that made me remember what Galactus is now and such in a way where where they were saying about how your mama is so fact that even Gal or something about like Galactus and such where your mama is so fact that even Galactus saying whoa slow down something like that. So yeah. Now I now I definitely remember how Galactus. Fact that this that's how you most people just eat food and such like regular food. In order for this man to survive, he needs to eat entire planets. Feeding 
he would perish. Crazy. Just as humans would without consuming plants or other animals. Gotta let go. I hunt squirrels because they hate each and every one of them. No, no, categorically the exact opposite, actually. Galactus Baby. isn't vengeful or cruel. If he could avoid any unnecessary death, he would. But just as the universe is bound by the laws of physics, Galactus is bound by his hunger. And that hunger has put him in conflict with some of Marvel's other heaviest hitters, like Odin and the Phoenix Force. Galactus's fight with the Other and the Scryer got so intense, they threatened the entire infinite multiverse just as a side effect of the battle. While Galactus himself Self can comfortably cross countless light years in seconds, some of these beings are more like abstract concepts than actual living things, many of which operate outside of linear time. Like this alien bug dude who tried to use Galactus's energy to destroy two whole universes. Even after being drained by him, he still nuked three whole star systems before getting a snack. Should he somehow be threatened by beings beyond even the scope of his power, Galactus crafted a device to solve all of his problems, the ultimate nullifier. In case that name isn't obvious enough, it's a teeny tiny weapon that destroys anyone you think of. It doesn't just destroy them, it destroys everything. The entire multiverse is eradicated, then recreated without the target. An extremely roundabout way of winning, but it works. That's exactly what happened when Galactus used it on the abstract god of destruction, Abraxas. He destroyed the god of destroying things with a Happy Meal toy. It's like my therapist said. Great things come in small packages. And the nullifier was key to Galactus' first great defeat upon his inevitable arrival. I disagree. What? Can't speak from experience. I cannot. But what can I? I can say that little fact that he said about great things come in small packages. I don't know about that now. To each, all I'm going to say is to each his own. <laughs> I'm not touching that topic. That's for oh, y'all to decide. And the nullifier was key to Galactus's first great defeat upon his inevitable arrival on Earth. When that pesky Reed Richards managed to get his stretchy hands on the thing, Galactus finally backed down and spared the planet. Which makes no practical sense. The ultimate nullifier is a part of Galactus himself. It uses his own power. He can summon it at any time and even escape its effects by hiding in a pocket dimension. It even had the safety on. Maybe he was just bored. <laughs> After billions it's of boring. years of cosmic genocide just to survive, I'm pretty sure Galen forgot what it meant to be mortal. Perhaps that was the true evil all along, the slow death of Galen's humanity. Mm. Because what could be more terrifying than a being that sees everything and everyone you know and love as nothing more than his next meal? Damn. Crazy. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by BetterHelp. Wiz, it's getting to be the holiday season again, and I just know Mama Boomstick is finally getting me the new dirt buggy I've been driving. Just to let y'all know, like I said, this was for Christmas, so a bit late to it and such, so yeah, that's why it's like that. Because this was like over a week ago this got put, so my bad on being late to it. Just for Told y'all before on certain days where I feel like reacting, and that certain days I'm back. help h e l p dot com slash death battle. Now we're going on to now before heaven and earth, before light and dark, there was Unicron, created by the formless primordial being known as the One to explore the fledgling multiverse. Mm -hmm. Unicron instead decided to consume everything. Dude, <laughs> come on! Bad Unicron! Bad God! Bad! The One decided to split Unicron into two beings, one of order and hope known as Primus, and the other of chaos and evil known as Unicron. Again! Like all good sibling rivalries, they pushed each other's shit in over the fate of all existence. That yeah. is, until the goody little two-shoes Primus tricked his bro into Brenna, imprisoning you their souls in great. giant asteroids. Classic sibling prank. For me, it was the dryer. Primus terraformed his asteroid into what would later be known as the planet Cybertron. While Unicron did something... different. Sorry, yeah, that was my he fault. turned his planet into a planet that eats other planets! Not only that, 
It can change its form into a giant badass robot Satan! He's literally the first Transformer! And with this <laughs> new body, Unicron would travel the cosmos consuming planet after planet and universe after universe. Not necessarily because of any hunger or need, but because Unicron is the physical embodiment of death and destruction. He is literally programmed to destroy everything. God's gotta do what a god's gotta do. And good luck trying to fight back! Uni's robot body comes with a tractor beam, eye lasers, fire breath, a chest cannon, and an antibody system in case anyone tries to pull a Drax on him. Unicron can mentally dominate an entire race of beings. Why are you gonna put Bati why are you gonna put Dave Batista there? Leave my wrestler f leave my wrestling out of this. Anyone tries to pull a Drax on him. Unicron leave my wrestling out of this. Entire race of beings, Bad. erase things <laughs> from existence, warp the fabric of space and time, and even manipulate matter itself. So even if his big robot body is damaged or destroyed, he can repair it like he split, or even send his spark out to find a new host. Essentially, the Transformers version of a soul, Unicron's <laughs> spark is immensely powerful and produces its own energy source, Dark Energon. Unicron is so evil that he can literally turn his bad dude energy into weapons of mass destruction, <laughs> like unholy blades or planet-busting lasers. This dark Energon will corrupt any that consumes it, turning them into a puppet of Unicron himself. It's also obviously the opposite of regular Energon, which is created by Primus and what fuels the Transformer race. So Unicron basically runs on the opposite of life. If he's death as a big robot, can he even be killed? Not by any conventional means. Even the destruction of his spark isn't guaranteed to end him. He will continue to exist as a necessary force that drives the cosmos. Anytime he's destroyed, he will appear again in a new universe. In fact, almost every Unicron you've seen in movies, TV, and comics are the same Unicron. Unicron is a literal force of nature. You can't reason with a hurricane that hates you. All you can do is see it and get Yay, it wrong. out of the way. But this hurricane is never gonna stop until you and everyone you know is D.E.D. -E -D dead. His mere presence drove an entire planet insane. I was trying to be poetic before, but uh, this, this is what evil is. Incomprehensible, Damn. undeniable, inescapable. You can't even wait him out. He is unbound by the concept of linear time. The Chaos Bringer is so powerful, his mere presence wrecks the space-time continuum and can erase galaxies from existence just by strolling by to be clear it isn't the force he's generating imagine that somebody just this damn big ass cosmic giant just walking by and such just fucks up the space time for you crazy galaxies from existence just by strolling by to be clear it isn't the force he's generating by moving that destroys things, hmm. it's his existence. His mere being is so overwhelmingly evil that the fabric of space-time cannot fathom Unicron's presence. Holy f dude! No wonder no he cursing. was able to devour nearly a quarter of the entire multiverse, hey. one universe at a time. Hey. Estimates for the size of the Transformers multiverse vary, from over 15 quadrillion universes to an infinite number of universes, branching timelines, and planes of existence. And who better to portray a being who brings death to the universe than the man who gave birth to modern cinema? A final role fitting for an artist so much larger than life. Or deeply ironic that it's a feature-length toy commercial. Yeah, the Transformers movie has always been celebrated for his excellence. I say. Despite that unbelievable power, the Chaos Bringer's almighty rampage through reality has thing? been halted a number of times, usually due to the matrix of leadership, the essence of Primus himself, and the embodiment of all hope and light in the universe. Are you telling me that Robo Satan was defeated by the power of friendship? Forget beer! I'm gonna need some of that shit going straight into the vein! As the abstract idea of- Now why would you say that now? Talking about forget beard, that's just nigga. Are you trying to not make my channel get monetized? Stop saying ish like that. I know we're past the the one the thirty seconds of not cursing and such, but come on, man. I'm trying to get some ads on this video. Stop that. You saying stuff like that? You're crazy. You're wilding. Wilding now with that. Cut it out. Boomstick or whoever you is, back it off. You're telling me that 
Robo Satan was defeated by the power of friendship. Forget defeated. beer. I'm gonna need. It's always the power of friendship. Going straight into the vein. As the abstract idea of evil actualized, any notion of goodness is directly antithetical to his being. As incomprehensible to Unicron as he is to us. But despite the best efforts of heroic Transformers like bang, Optimus Prime, bang, bang. Unicron has always returned from the smoldering ashes of defeat and risen to threaten reality again. It's his very nature. Such as the time a united armada of Autobots, Decepticons, and an entire people created from his cells, the Minicons, tried to destroy him once and for all. They actually succeeded in killing him until Galvatron's hatred for Optimus brought Unicron back to life. Because challenging Unicron means challenging evil itself, destroying destruction itself, an impossible paradox. You can't kill Unicron because killing is literally what Unicron is. So, How are you going to kill a killer? Mean for us? Every petty act of violence, every war, every cruelty, every death battle gives Unicron life. The life he'll use to kill us all. We so you need to tell me if I go every so if I fight somebody or if I shoot somebody, right? And they dead. You need to tell me with just by that death that I did, that powers him up more and more. This is why, I, at that point, right? At that point, I'm not even killing nobody. I'm gonna just straight give them the hands, cause that's technically, yeah, cause that's technically not killing them. That's just beating them down, giving them bumps and bruises and all that. Cause the fact is that I killed that person, and that's powering him up more. more. Nah, crazy. Thank you. I have done. I am not going to dis. I am not going to contribute to your sadistic ways. Thank you very much. Sticking my ass over here. Is. So Staying my ass what does that here. For us? Every petty act of violence. Every petty war, and it's petty every act. Cruelty, every death battle gives Unicron life. The life he'll use to kill us all. We are culpable in our own annihilation. Unicron's not just some comic book villain. He's all there is and all there will be. He was there at the beginning and he'll be there at the end. He's a law of physics. He's as inevitable as your dying breath. Jesus, now you got me scared. Yeah, the damn. Talk about revving up. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Death Battle. That's called Synergy, right, Wiz? By popular demand, Death Battle the. Thing in search. Already know we battle game. Plug all yourself all you want when I'm not reacting to you. Plug yourself when I'm not reacting to you. Otherwise, from that, I'm reacting to you. Y'all ain't gonna plug yourself on my channel if y'all ain't giving me some of that shit. I'm kidding. Make sure y'all go pop some copy. Also, whatever, whatever you see here that they're trying to. Out, happy. Okay. Sorry, y'all. So I'll be saying with oh, Death this battle. copy. All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's, it's time, time for the death, death battle, battle you've been asking for forever. Yeah, you know. As all things must, your world. Has come to an end. Oh damn! Halt! This planet is mine to consume. Oh damn! They went three. They went three D on this one. Nah, they really took it up a notch. Shout out to Death Battle for the animation. They really. Hook it up a notch. Making it go 3D and ish. They really took it up a notch. Halt! This planet is mine to consume. So saith Galactus. Destroyer of worlds. Be gone. Thus decrees Unicron. Chaos Bringer. Damn. 
let's go. All right, so let me. I want to got to predict a winner. Judging by how this is, I'ma say Galactus. I'ma say Galactus. Madness, so quick to prepare for oblivion's embrace. I am oblivion. Okay, that's it. Damn. Ain't no way these two are using the freaking planets and the sun as freaking balls and such of like these motherfuckers are sorry if I'm cursing, but these motherfuckers are playing dodgeball with planets and the sun. Imagine you're one of these planets and all of a sudden you you feel a rumbling and such, and it's these two motherfuckers playing Dodgeball with your planet. Um, we dead. And if anyhow that planet breaks, we all dead. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> I am the power cosmic in not so easily felt. Damn. Uh. Fleeing so readily, Unicron. No devourer. Transforming. Beg not for mercy, behold blackening sky. Against mine chaos, even gods will die. planets from this fight is gone <laughs> that's all i must say i be t look if you are not see me going it's basically like this i'm in i'm just watching right i'm just watching to watch because all i know is the animation plus the freaking chore choreography of all this is all this stuff is insane so shout out to death battle on going over a thousand percent because we've already seen how they gone with other ones and such like for like anime video games and hell movies and such but for and it'd be like reg regular characters who are at least like regular size you can say even if they're all powerful regular size but these guys really went up uh, to quote buzz light up to infinity and beyond <laughs> So shout out to Buzz Lightyear for his story and such with this animation and such. Shout out to them. All I can say. This world will bring destruction to it all. I am destruction, pure finality. In first and last, true immortality. It was the black hole. Thus 
demand. Yeah, damn. Finally, I have won. Nope. and Unicron were beings who could manipulate reality itself and do basically anything. Yeah. Older than the universe, unbound by time, they had each other matched in a lot of ways. So it ultimately came down to which of them was more powerful. Both could threaten an entire infinite multiverse, but yep. Unicron could only do so over time, devouring them one by one. Mm. While Galactus's battle with the Scryer and the other threatened to destroy the entire Marvel multiverse as just a side effect. Not to mention, Galactus tussles with cosmic beings like himself all the time. While Unicron Dude. is usually the top dog in Transformers, he's a big fish in a relatively small pond. Relative to Marvel, at least. <laughs> that might sound better for Unicron at first, but it means he has way less experience than Galactus in full on fights against dudes his size. And Dude. while Unicron has used Dark Energon to infect and corrupt. Hey, it's always. You always hear the saying. They, they always say size matters. Size does matter. <laughs> Sometimes people say size matter. Some say size doesn't matter. All of them say is. No matter what size you got, it depends on how you use it and how you can maneuver it. And Galactus in the end knew how to maneuver his size. Full on fights against dudes his size. And while Unicron has used Dark Energon to infect and corrupt other beings in the past, mm. Galactus technically doesn't have a soul thanks to his cosmic rebirth from Galen. And he's fended off mental attacks before, so there's no real reason to think that would work here. And as lame as it is, the ultimate nullifier is just really, really overpowered. Despite <laughs> Unicron being able to survive the destruction of his spark, the ultimate nullifier is significantly more thorough. Consider the time it was used against Abraxas, a being that embodied the abstract concept of the multiverse's destruction. Hmm, sounds like somebody you know? Even against someone like that, the good old Oli Nulli had no problem erasing him from reality. And the same would happen to Unicron. While Galactus could always hide in that pocket dimension, just as he escaped the nullifier before. Unicron was an insanely terrifying threat, but Galactus had the power, experience, and arsenal to ultimately annihilate him. I was I won if again. You Galactus was going down in this fight, you were Unicron. The winner is Galactus. Yeah. All right. So, as I was trying to say and such, cause the video, as y'all see me moving and such, it got froze in the OBS, so I had to oh, I had to stop the recording there and we put this here and such. So if you saw if you saw in the little reaction box where you saw the video, Galactus won. So I got my. So I got I got my bet right there one but as you saw where it says about how it's gonna be like if I'm not mistaken it said like Wally Coyote versus Tomcat hopefully they mean the Tomcat from like Tom and Jerry because if that's the case can't wait to see that but if it is a different one we'll see but hopefully y'all have a good 2024 that when January comes around and hopefully everybody had a great 2023 and such so close the door close the door i'm in go I'm Green screens serve me. Screen. Either way, hope y'all enjoyed this reaction, man. Trust me, like I said, this green screen now that I got. Any more? No. Either way, it's been your boy Homo Ziggy signing out. Stay positive and keep the vibes up. There you go.